Anyway, in this video we're gonna be doing two things. One is gonna be my favorite pastime, which is annoying the living shit out of anyone who this is AI, aka morons. And two, I'm gonna show you how to create this awesome UI for your blender in just a few minutes. Let's go. I had a lot of people asking me in my videos, how do you create this custom theme for your blender? How do you set up the colors, the UI, all that? And I have videos on this, but also we have an extensive section for this in our course, the Hard Surface Accelerator. You can get it on our website. By the way, if you click the link in the video description right now, you're going to get 50% off discount. And that course will teach you all the basics on hard surface modeling and much more. But going back to our video, like I said, I had a lot of people asking me about it. So I decided to make a video and show you how you can set your custom colors for UI changing the default cube color settings and all that you know to make it a bit more fresh and kind of fun to work with we're gonna be also using chat gpt so ai for a specific task in this video you don't really need it but uh i'm gonna show you a cool trick that could be interesting and uh, shows actually how capable ai is with recording some stuff that you know normally would take you freaking hours and phd in chaos mathematics do you know what i mean so we're gonna talk about all that so let's get started so you know this is what we want to achieve right more or less and i'll show you how easily you can set it up so i'm gonna reset this to uh, factory settings so let me just go here to uh, default and load factory settings all right so now we're in default blender settings and you know we're gonna be setting everything up from scratch so first of all we want to want to do is we want to make sure that the background and you know and the grid have a certain color to it right so what we want to do is we want to go to preferences and we want to go here to themes so you want to go to 3d viewport and I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of options for colors and settings, especially when you're gonna be opening all these sub menus here. It's just mental, right? It's crazy. But you know, don't worry about it, it's really simple. So let me just uh, increase the uh, size of the UI here to 1.4 so you can actually see what the hell I'm doing. And I'm gonna also uncheck this, uh, there we go, save perhaps, cool. So now I'm going to open my color and hex cheat sheet and I got it by the way from ChatGPT. Now ChatGPT is incredible, I mean incredible, in coming up with complementary colors. So for example when I'm working on thumbnail or when I'm working on an ad for Facebook for our courses, whatever, right? I am always consulting ChatGPT to give me hexes that are going to fit the narrative and ChatGPT is insane with colors. I mean it's mathematically precise and it really makes a huge difference. So so I think that, you know, basically ChatGPT is one of the cheapest AI tools and the value for money and the return on, on money spent on invested is just mind boggling, you know, how much value you can get out of this. But anyway, I digest. So let's go here uh, to preferences and let's go to themes and let's go to 3D viewport and let's open this up. Now, I'm going to be changing things in this window which is going to be kind of difficult to see for you in re you know in real time what's happening on the screen but i'm going to move it to the other screen later on so what you want to do first is you see want to change the grid of you know the uh, the default grid color of blender and the way you do that is you go here to theme space and gradient colors and that's actually the grid color so i'm gonna grab a hex that chart gpt came up with and uh drop it in here and it comes with value saturation and here you see we're going to get this lovely cyan color now we want to change the grid color um, at the moment it's a little bit too intrusive i want to make it a little bit less you know less nutty so i'm going to go back to the settings and i'm going to grab the grid value which is this hex and i'm going to put it in grid now grid color is in here right in 3d viewport i don't know why it's split like that but you know it is what it is See, this is going to give us this kind of a nice, subtle, faint, kind of a slightly yellowish, you know, tint to it. And it's going to be very nicely offsetting this kind of a cyanish backdrop. Now, the, the cube doesn't really, I mean, it does fit in a way, but, you know, we're going to change it. So there are two ways of changing the colors of the cube, okay? I'm working, by the way, in the alpha version Blender 5.0. And in 5.0, these settings look a little bit different because when I go here to... Uh, material but that's the default settings for blender by the way right studio and default matcap and then theme material now if you switch it here to custom which by the way moved from other versions of blender because in 4.3 for example that option is different it's not 
custom is actually uh, here, single. Okay, so they switch from single to custom. It makes more sense, but I wish they were spending mine on something more meaningful. But anyway, so you go to custom and now you can change the color of the cube. And obviously what we can do, we can screenshot this, right? You can open chat GPT now, drop this screenshot here and say, give me hex for that cube. Now we don't want to change it too much. We want to just dial in so you know it's not really see like he gave me two right but i want to say i want to keep it more or less the same just make sure i got a complementary color hex right and it's going to give me one hex so you can talk to it that's the advantage of chat gpt versus majority for example you can talk to chat gpt it's going to you know spit you some information back so it says use this one okay let's let's try this and see what it is if we don't like it we can always come back so let's go here and go to custom and let's just, you know, replace this, right? Boom, right? Well, that's uh, not what we want. We wanted blue, so I think he misunderstood. So let's go back and... Oh, wait a minute. I think I took the wrong hacks. My bad. I was supposed to get this one. Let's go back here again. Yeah, there we go. So that's cool, but I want it a bit brighter, right? So let's go back here and say, listen, this is cool. Slightly brighter, almost pastel, bright and clean. Let's try this one. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. See, like it stands out. It's not too, uh, you know, blinding. It's not gray. It's kind of slightly bluish. I really like it, right? I really like it. So we can actually put it in here under cube, cube hacks, and I'm going to drop it in my file and just save it. And you can keep this file saved, you know, somewhere in the cloud and Dropbox or whatever, Google Drive, etc. Now, there's another way of doing this. And the way to do this is by changing the SL file. And let me explain you what I mean. So if I reset this to mat here and I go here, you see, we can choose different mat cups, right, uh, to light this cube differently, but they're all gray. Now, if you want to change the SL file, which is baked into Blender, you would first need to actually get that file extracted, put it in chat GPT and tell them, listen, I want to keep the SL file settings, but I want to change the hex. And I actually altered this SL file a little bit and I created something like this, which I like because it's really flat and it doesn't really bother me. And, you know, the lighting is kind of slightly removed. There's a little bit of a lighting, you know, on the top and the side, but mostly it's kind of flattish, right? which is kind of easy to work with, especially when you're going to turn on cavity, because without cavity, it's a bit difficult to see. But with cavity, it looks really nice. Now, what you could do on top of this theme, you could stock, uh, you know, the color you have, you have here. So you could, you know, kind of change it uh, dynamically on top of what you already have in that SL file. You could reduce the saturation here and, for example, create, you know, something something like this, which is also cool. So you could, you know, combine them together. Now, how to get the SL file, right? What you want to do is you want to go to your C drive. You want to go to program files. You want to go to Blender Foundation. You want to go to whichever Blender version you have installed. You want to go to a Blender version, data files, and Studio Light Studio, and then grab this basic SL. And you can drop it to ChatGPT, tell him what you want to do, and then he's going to create a new SL file, and you're going to literally download it from ChatGPT, put it in here, and Bob Janko. And you can switch between your custom SL files, you know, however you want, just like you would switch between custom mudcaps, okay? So that's how it works. Now we can keep it on default here, and we can switch it back here to custom, and, you know, drop this hex here if you want to. I think this one was really cool. I really like it. It's kind of you know, slightly bluish, standing out. I like it. Now what we need to do, we need to fix, you know, the highlight on the cube. We need to fix the, you know, the face, the face colors, edge color, vertex, all that, because it's rubbish, right? It doesn't really fit color wise, you know, the color palette is off. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on that. So first, what I want to do is I want to change the opacity and color and intensity of the value for wire and verts. So I don't want them to be black, I want them to be charcoal gray. It's going to be more elegant, you know, it's sort of a little bit more posh. Do you know what I mean? Like less vulgar. So we're going to drop it in here. It's going to be charcoal grayish. We're going to look really cool. And wireframe here, boom. And vertex, which is here, boom, right? So you need to switch all these. So again, wire, wire edit, and vertex. Now, 
let me just save this and you'll see that if I go to edit mode, I'm going to have these nice charcoal, you know, verts and edges. Now we can't see anything because they're too faint. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and you want to increase vert size to seven and edge size to two and save that and boom. Right now we got this nice kind of a highlight on this edge looks kind of like, a, you know, like this stylized sci fi art from Borderlands, do you know, what I mean, like slightly between realistic and something cartoonish. I really like it. It's kind of fun to work in this kind of a UI. Now, the UI is mostly sorted, but we still need to work on, you know, the vert color, the edge color, the side of the UI is the menu, all that. So let's keep going. So let's go back here to, to the settings. And now we need to change the um, face mode selection. Now, description here is a bit confusing. Face mode selection, that means when you actually select a face or select an edge. So we're going to go here, edge mode selection. We're going to drop this hex and then face mode selection. We're going to drop the same hex. Right, and then vert selected, right? We're gonna drop the same hex and we're gonna save it. So now if I'm gonna go here, you'll see that if I select the vert, it's gonna be gonna whitish yellowish. Uh, and then if I select an edge, it's gonna be also whitish. But if I select the vert, you see the edges are still yellow. Why? Because there's another settings in the UI settings here, this one, which is called uh, edge selection. Technically, when you're selecting a vert, edges are also selected in a way, not directly, but indirectly. And that's what this setting denotes. So what we need to do, we're gonna change that too. So we're gonna go here to, you know, grab another uh, hex, which is a bit brighter, just to, you know, differentiate between them. And we're gonna drop this in here, and we're gonna drop this in here, right? So boom, drop that, save perhaps, good to go. So now when I'm gonna be selecting vert, boom, we're gonna get this beautiful, you know, blue highlight. The same with faces, you know, I go to faces, select them, and it looks really, really nice. The same with edges, so you can select the edges and it looks really cool. And you see the uh, the edge that's of face uh, of vert that's selected last is gonna be the active one. And this one's gonna be white, it's gonna be slightly brighter, so you can kind of distinguish in between them, right? So we got that sorted. Now we need to sort out the you know selection of a default object. So the the selection of uh, of an object, and also selection of an active object. So we're gonna do the same thing. So face mode selection hex gonna go to object selected, which is uh, here, right? An active object is gonna be white. So we can basically go here and you know drop the saturation, and make it completely white which is going to be the same thing as active face or active edge, okay? So we're going to save that, and I think our UI is going to be sorted. So now, you see, it's a beautiful white highlight, but I'm going to bluish highlight, but if I'm going to select both of them, one of them is going to be brighter, one of them is going to be darker. So this one is a kind of a bluish one, this one is white. So active object is white, and the one selected is going to be, you know, uh, kind of slightly bluish, okay? Cool. I really like that. So now next, we're going to change the colors of these menus, and that's really easy, okay? So what you want to do is you want to go here to the bottom. We can actually collapse this thing here, right? And we're going to go to properties, right? And theme and space. And you see here we have header. So we want to change the header to something darker. So I got the hex for bars. So I'm going to go here and boom, and the bar is going to change to darker blue. So now for the 3D viewport bar, right? The header is here on the theme space, okay? So click here, paste that, boom, and change to darker blue. And the same one with outliner, which is gonna be here, right? So we're gonna go to outliner, boom, right? And theme space and header and boom, right? So now we need to change the background of the menus, which we're gonna use for it the uh, gradient color, which means the um, the background color of uh, you know of the, of Blender, so it's gonna be nice and kind of um, uniform and also gonna stand out against these darker bars. So we're gonna go here to window background and you know slap that. Then we're gonna go to let's just collapse this and uh, here and then hang on a second and uh, not this one properties. That's the one. Uh, that's the one. That's the one I wanted. There we go. Now, next one's gonna be this navigation bar here on the side, and this is this one, navigation bar background, so, you know, change that. And the last thing we wanna change is gonna be the color of these panels here, and that's hidden in here, panel colors header. So we're gonna grab the darker color, which is gonna be for the for the bar color, so the same one as we run for the bars, and we're gonna just slap it in here, which is gonna nicely offset them, 
um, you know, like that. And honestly, I don't mind the refs being gray and white because, you know, and kind of slightly blunder bluish and yellowish because it really fits the theme. And now you got this really lovely theme going on. So what you want to do is you want to save preferences, right, after you finish. And you do want to run the, you know, save startup file. Uh, command and there you go that your you know that your blender is set now you're gonna have to repeat that for every new blender it's gonna be very difficult to copy preferences from one blender to another you technically could copy the config file but i would not recommend doing this because this could create a lot of conflicts between blender versions especially when there is a code change so when the blender changes coding and you know you when you open blender for the first time you got this splash splash window it asks you whether you would like to import preferences from a previous blender version installed on your pc don't do that and i explained this in detail in my other videos also like i said this is explained in great detail in the accelerator course i mentioned in the beginning so if you really want to get you know the hang of not just learning how to model hard surface molding but how to understand blender inside out and you know all the menus the tools you know what to use what not to use what's important what's not important all that grab that course because it's phenomenal it's a very tight and well-structured curriculum and people really really like it so you know go ahead click the link in the video description grab the course like i said 50 percent off for good luck by the way going back to the video you know so that's it and um, that's how easy it is to set it up and like i said if you're doing anything with colors and you know whether it's texturing or creating some kind of thumbnails for whatever reason you need or uh, editing some videos consult ai because ai has a fantastic mathematically precise input on colors and hexes and you can create some mind-blowing combinations of colors that your brain would never come up with that's what i would highly recommend and this is a fun way of updating blender ui and kind of you know making blender anew and kind of giving it this you know fresh feel and look and i i think it's you know, it's really cool to work like that so i might start recording videos like this uh, because you know it looks really badass it's really easy to see things and like i said again remember to turn on cavity because that's important okay cavity is essential without cavity you, you ain't gonna be able to see the edges the highlights you'll have to run bevels and you don't want to do that because this will inflate unnecessarily you know the scene with polygons and when you're modeling something you want to have as least impact on performance as possible so you can focus on the creative process right well that's it for this video thanks for watching and shout out to all the haters of ai we love you guys keep it real